with when you come to the question of you know design and the word Africa attached to it, um, we have to learn to um, overcome, if you will, um, the legacy of how this relationship to design um, has been mostly confined to the artisanal, uh, has been confined you know, to um, types of production that one might you know, conceive not as within the vocabulary of contemporary design. And that means uh, the you know, concepts like um, uh, recycling, concepts like you know, um, remodeling, concepts like um, impoverished, concepts like, shall we say, informal. So we have to really rethink all these different concepts in order to uh, find the productivity of those concepts in relation to the present and not only in relation to certain ideas of deficit that may attach to uh, Africa in general. And, and I, I, so this is really one of the reasons why uh, I believe that the vocabulary itself needs to be self-critical even when we use terms and concepts that are already very much around. We have to invert the logic of those concepts in order to find the essence of new meaning within those concepts today. I think it's a, it's a very, very uh, important you know, you know, word uh, for how design acts in the world. And that is to say that on, t on two levels, Aspire could be related to the consumer, the person you know, who um, you know, invites him or herself into the space in which the maker of the thing exists. On the other hand, it has to do with uh, giving uh, you know, life to uh, a set of principles that already you know, um, lack in visibility. And so, in this sense, the, the, the notion to aspire you know, really could mean to you know, to engage, to bring, you know, to life uh, an object, an idea, a sort of concept that need the consumer to, con you know, to, to complete it and to give it agency, in a sense. So that is the term, aspire is a term of agency, is a term that I see as, um, you know, the prerequisite for any design that um, emerges out of Africa. Important, um, you know, to collaborate, to, to come together, to bridge um, differences, to exploit the differences as um, mechanisms for invention, mechanisms for going beyond one own um, uh, shall we say, um, dead certainties. To collaborate is to give something up in exchange for receiving something back. And I think this is vital. I'm very interested in the idea of consumption from the anthropophagic, you know, uh, in point of view. And that is um, really to consume means to, in a sense, to eat the other to ingest you know, something that in, at first might seem incompatible to one's own you know, cultural milieu. I see it's an active way of you know, breaking down um, and reinvesting you know, the, the power of the consumer with a new potency. And I, I hesitate to use the notion uh, you know, consumption, to, you know, in, 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 in the way I've uh, connected it to anthropophagy. But you know that one of the things in, that one oftentimes have to deal with in Africa 
is the search for authenticity. You know, and it is within consumption that we really try to overcome this search for authenticity where nothing changes. So to consume is really to challenge authenticity. While it's still very difficult to move from one part of the continent to the other, um, the digital uh, has been uh, an incredible device um, to think about the huge potential, the huge possibilities that exist for Africans to collaborate, to consume, and to aspire, and, and to, you know, um, to mark a place, even if the place in, in itself is virtual. The reason why we need to find a new vocabulary is to, you know, to transform how design can you know, create a new toolbox for everyday users. And to think about the future is to think about one's own possibilities in the world. And I think um, I've oftentimes say that you know, the future belongs to Africa because it seems to have happened everywhere else. The globalization is a way of participation, it's a way of bringing African ideas to the world, it's a way of embedding African in, you know, concepts in the world to enable it to travel, to enable it to also produce returns. The notion of the informal is something that is already invested um, with this idea um, that much of Africa is made up of the informal economy. And, and I want to really question some of the, uh, the ideas that are based on this notion of informality. Um, because in, in, in the informal is seen you know, to lack you know, um, power, they are always, it's, um, it's in, it oftentimes it's invisible simply by the sheer force of it not being inscribed within official circuits. I always like to hear that, you know, people in Africa, you know, survive on one dollar a day. And I've been hearing this for ever since <laughs> I can count. <laughs> Do Africans ever get a raise? <laughs> can it be at least, you know, a dollar fifty? <laughs> is there no inflation? <laughs> How is that possible? And that is the way if you think about the entire informal economy. It's an economy of incredible creativity. So how can one harness the understanding of informality as a, one of the great engine blocks for the you know, uh, orientation of Africa because it's about really what you know people do in the everyday to you know that creates the, you know the, where people take uh, the power of their own destiny to their own hands. I think we have to inspire design to be more than utilitarian, to be more than functional. Um, we need you know to inspire useless design just for the sheer effort of, you know, inventing and creative, creating things um, as a way of innovating. Um, I think we need to inspire designers to make useless things. Make to produce, I think it is really um, everything that has to do, in my view, you know, with challenging the complacency of you know, mass consumption. To make something, you know, um, is really very crucial because I think we reinvest in the, 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 the power of the imagination. Because one of the things that have destroyed many African economies is, you know, the importation of cheap goods. So we need to take up on the political utility of making, you know, the renegade in the practice of making as a form of 
investigating uh, new tropes, new concepts, and new industries uh, within the African context. Design needs to be multidisciplinary. Design needs to learn from you know, different disciplines in order to come to the essence of what you know, even the simplest object propo can propose. How can one think intelligently of politics? I think that politics is, the, you know, for me, a fundamental way through one, you know, self-creates and the very mechanism of subjectivity and sub subjectivizing to be seen, to be visible. So the politics of design here is the politics of self-affirmation. There is a term in Nigeria called Tokumbo. There's a market called the Tokumbo market. It's, it's not officially called Tokumbo, but you know, that's where you go to find second-hand goods. And the politics of resources and the relationship between second-hand goods, obsolete goods shipped from the West to Africa. It's a big one. It's, a, it's related to recycling, you know, and this notion that Africa should always be the destination for the obsolete, for the outmoded, you know, for things that have lived their usefulness. And I think the idea of recycling, you know, um, is very, very important because what Africa can teach us about recycling is the fact that things can find new lives and new forms you know, through ingenious ways, but we should not overvalue recycling in Africa. And that's why the humor associated with Tokumbo, which means kind of second child in Yoruba, in which case one can say that this, you know, that that's also second best uh, to go to, you know, to, to, you know, to reacquire the, the remainders and the leftovers of, of, of the West um, is a powerful incentive to rethink, you know, recycling. So the politics of recycling has to become part of, you know, our discourse within the framework of design. I do believe that style, you know, is the resistance to confine oneself to where circumstances say that you belong is to go beyond that, to live with a sense of constant affirmation of the beauty of one's own life, of one's own possibility, with incredible, you know, it's not an outward thing, so it's, you know, it's a, a style that really is inherent in, you know, going beyond, you know, the gift that objects might make to one, but it's about this sense of self-affirmation.